Hi. Today I'm going to explore how to get this table here, which is a very popular type of folding table, adapted so it can be transported more readily. These are really pretty nice, but they do weigh a bit, and uh, they just have this little carrying handle. And as you can see, if you're trying to carry it any distance, you're carrying it like this, which is a very fatiguing position to carry. Your shoulder, your arms are going to get tired very quickly. And I found when I cart this around, often I have to carry it across a large parking lot and maybe up a bunch of stairs into a building and some, some distance away for the displays I set up. I wanted to come up with some way to make it a little easier to transport it without going overboard. And I had this idea that I could probably make some sort of a sling to go over my shoulder like this using uh, this is two inch nylon webbing belt that I happen to have laying around and if I made a loop of it like this I could carry it on my shoulder pretty easily I might also want to put some extra thing on here to keep it from sliding off my shoulder so that'll be the rest of this video so the table I have, I think it's pretty typical, uh, no matter which brand they are. Uh, they tend to have a cloth handle that comes out of them, and uh, it's perfectly comfortable for carrying except for the posture. I don't want to have to modify the table or do anything too elaborate. There is the possibility of running a strap in here and wrapping it around the uh, metal structure of the legs, but uh, then it's going to be harder to disconnect. I'm thinking it's probably just great to just run the wide belting through here and uh, you know carry it like this. That should work just fine. Um, and the main trick will be how to make it so it disconnects fairly readily without a lot of grief. And uh, what I think I'm going to use for this is one of these parachute buckles. Uh, these make for very quick connecting and disconnecting and this one here is set up for the same width belt, uh, a two inch. And uh, this is uh, particular ones by Dritz. Is it Dritz? I guess it's Dritz. Well so much for making their logo intelligible. It might also be Oritz. Don't really know. Anyway, it's a popular brand and um, so if I put one of these parachute buckles on here, then it'll make a loop that I can sling through here, clip easily, slip over my shoulder, and then unclip easily when I need to get free of the table. Um, of course, I can just slip it off my shoulder if I want without unbuckling it, and that's even quicker. But the other thing that I was thinking about was uh, to keep it from slipping off the shoulder. I've got some one-inch nylon web belting here. And I was thinking of doing like are done on backpacks and uh, camelback hydration packs for hikers and bicyclists and soldiers and so on. And, and uh, connecting that from the, the wide strap, wrap it around the chest, and then back to uh, the shoulder blade. And thereby, uh, by having this smaller strap go around the body... It keeps the shoulder strap with the wide belt from slipping off. Yet you can use it or not use it as the case may be required. So I've got a couple of more of these parachute buckles. I wanted to use the same brand as this, which is what I've used on other cases and straps I've made. But uh, none of the stores seem to have those in stock, so I've got this Soology brand, which is pretty comparable in a uh, parachute buckle. And I've planning on using one of these in the front and one of these in the rear. Um, and uh, finally, in order to be able to cinch that up, uh, I've got a strap adjuster of one inch size. So I can uh, take up or let out the strap, and that would depend somewhat on which clothes I'm wearing. If it's the winter and I've got a big park on, I may need the strap to be a little longer. If it's the summer and I'm just wearing my uh, t-shirt or polo shirt, I might want the strap to be a bit shorter or tighter. 
uh, whereas the strap that goes over my shoulder, I couldn't find any uh, strap adjusters in that size. And since I'm just making this for myself, I'm just going to make it the size that works for me and my table. If you're going to make something like this, you might want to put a strap adjuster on it or just make it to fit yourself in your particular situation. Well, here's a piece of good news. This particular brand of parachute buckle that I've got uh, includes a strap adjuster built into it. Uh, I've looped up my two inch belting here and uh, it's going to be kind of hard to show with out holding it but uh, the strap just passes through here and when you pull tight it won't slip but if you tip it up a little bit then it'll adjust so I don't really need a separate strap adjuster I'll just use the the uh, parachute buckle itself and that'll be great so uh, as with any of these nylon web products it's important to set them up so they don't fray and uh, this one as it came from the store is coarsely cut and already frayed so I'm going to start out here with my good fabric cutting scissors and make a nice clean cut in it and then uh, you always have to seal the end of the belt with uh, heat and the easiest way to do that is to use um, either a, a small lighter or something else and uh, if I can get this thing to work, it's kind of difficult to deal with. Well, my little shop torch may be overkill, but I'm going to see if I can make it work for this purpose. Yeah, that worked pretty well. All the ends of the nylon fibers are fused. And uh, it's important when you're working with these, let me see if I can zoom this in a little bit more. There's a right way and a wrong way with these. Um, you normally want to start out with the the middle part here, let's see if I can tip it so it's clear, this middle part here has ridges on it on one side only. The other side is smooth and then there's ridges on this other part. So with the middle bar having the ridges up, the strap passes through from the bottom. Uh, like that and then you tuck it back down through the other slot and the idea is that as the belting passes over the middle bar it's dragging along the part with the the ridges so it gets a better grip so this is a good pull here but yet I can pull it up tight easily and then when you uh, are putting tension on it it won't budge and to release it you just tip the buckle a little bit and it pulls back out like this. So the next thing is to figure out how long a strap I need under the worst case conditions and I'm going to measure that now. So I figured out where I need to cut it and I decided to adjust or cut the strap so it can be so loose that the table actually sits on the ground uh, with me standing upright and then I can cinch it up to bring it up as high under my armpit essentially as I want or have it anywhere in between. Um, so I've got a chalk line on here and cutting that through. I'm going to fuse it. Now this part of the buckle, of the parachute buckle, doesn't have a top or a bottom side. It'll work either way so I'm not too worried about it, but for cosmetic reasons I'd like to have the 
fold over part on the inside of the loop. So this here with the short side, that's the outside of the loop. So when you're carrying it up against your body, the side that's facing my thumb here is the inside of the loop. So I'm going to make sure that I put that on the inside when I come around to the end. I'm actually going to chalk that right now, saying that's the inside. And um, all you really do with these is just pass them through the loop and then bring them over like this and sew them. And uh, the recommendation is just to sew back and forth a few times with your sewing machine with a lock stitch, of course. So uh, sewing that up will be the next step. Uh, with any of the projects I do involving uh, essentially plastic fabrics, nylon, webbing, ripstop nylon, anything like that, uh, I always use a nylon upholstery thread to go with it instead of going back to the old cotton thread I'd use for clothing. This stuff is all but indestructible so it's it's really good for this and it's it's quite strong and it matches the fabric of the uh, web belting. So to work on this kind of thing um, I select a lock stitch which on this machine is uh, stitch type 2 and because I'm working on a coarser fabric and a coarser thread, I want my stitch length to be somewhat longer. I don't really know how long. I'm going to try it at three and see what happens. And I've got a little piece of scrap cloth here. I'm going to turn off the lock stitch for the moment just to be a little more expedient. I'd say that stitch is probably still a little too short. I'm going to go up to like 3.5 and see how it goes. And that's possibly just a little long, so take it down to 3. Try it one more time. Yeah, that's about right. So I've got a stitch that looks like it's the right length for the project. And uh, now going back to my buckle, I make sure to take the side I identified as the inside of the loop and put it on the side that wraps around. And this seems like a good overlap. Now what you really want to do here is sew the edge of the belt is right here, so marked by my thumb. I want to put a stitch here and then make a box over here and here and then cross stitch it from one corner to the other and that's uh, the recommended stitch for uh, strength in this kind of situation. I'm going to go back and select my lock stitch, get my light under here so I can see what I'm doing. When I get to the end here, I lift the shoe and rotate 90 degrees, put it back down, and continue sewing until I get up really close to the point where the, the shoe won't go up on the buckle. At that point I have to raise it and turn it another 90 degrees.
raise it once more. I get back down to about where I was with the original stitch. And now I'm going to make my diagonal stitch for the cross stitch. my final cross stitch. And then I'm going to come back down this side. I doubled this one side in order to get back and do the cross stitch. So I'm going to double the other side just for symmetry but not for any other real reason. It gets me back to where I started the stitch in the first place tell the machine I'm done so it's going to do its closing lock stitch and uh, it's not the prettiest job in the world I got that a little bit uh, askew but it's a functional cross stitch. You can probably see it a little better there. Actually see the crossing. Um, snip off my excess thread. And that part is done. So now I've got the two pieces of the buckle. And uh, that should be plenty strong for my needs. And it's still adjustable, as pointed out before. So I think that's all good. Uh, I've decided I'm going to put a little stitching right along here. Even though I fused the fabric, I think it's still a good idea to put a little bit on there. And indeed, I think what I'm going to do is actually fold it over and then stitch it to make it less likely to pull back out of the buckle by accident. That's probably a, a good idea. sew a lot faster but uh, when I'm working on this heavier material the machine doesn't like to cooperate if I go really fast so it makes sense to sew a little slower I also should be using some a larger needle like a denim needle but I was just lazy here and I'm using the regular needle that I use for smaller cotton thread. stitch so how did that come out? Oh, it came out just about perfectly got the stitches right in the right spot normally when I'm doing this kind of thing I'll sew with the shorter end up so I can see where the end is I didn't do that in this case because it wasn't too critical but yeah it came out just about perfectly so the strap is basically done. Now all I have to do is figure out where to put the uh, smaller one that wraps around my chest to prevent the larger strap from sliding off my shoulder. So 
So uh, with the strap here and the table propped up, I can feed the large strap through the handle on the table and clip it and then simply insert my shoulder under it and lift. Now I've got it played out so uh, the table's almost on the floor, but by taking some weight off and uh, pulling the belt up a bit, now when I stand up the table comes a little higher, or I can take it up even more, and now the table's up. Oh, well, there's about six inches of clearance from the ground, and I can still bring it up even more and it's a lot closer up under the armpit now, it's about 8 inches off the floor and I can still keep bringing it up if I'd like to. Um, so now the, the other thing I'd mentioned, if I can do this without knocking everything over, I've got this 1 inch belting and I was trying to figure out if there was a, a feasible way of uh, somehow strapping it across my chest so that it keeps it from sliding off the shoulder so easily and I'm thinking this is about the height I want to carry it normally so I'm going to set up the strap ideally for this position I'm going to presume I always want the uh, the large parachute buckle here to be right against my rib cage just under my armpit uh, so I can access it easily for disconnecting and adjusting so I'm going to want to put the one strap just above and then wrap around to the back. Uh, so I'm going to mark that here. I've got my chalk somewhere. So probably right about here. Got that chalked. And I'm going to set the table down and still try to keep the strap in the same position and find the complementary position to uh, where I marked it but on the back side and mark that. That should be just behind my shoulder blade. So uh, the next thing is to put on the the strap around here. So with these uh, one inch parachute buckles I see now that they have a similar thing where it's basically got the strap adjuster built in. So I'll actually have two strap adjustments here and I don't actually need to use the separate uh, strap adjusters that I bought so uh, I could have saved some money there. No need to buy them. Adjust them right at the buckle. Alright so I've got the large strap laid out here. This is the front side that's going to be right uh, in front of my armpit and I'm going to want to have a strap coming off like this. Um, using this type of buckle uh, I want the adjustable side to be where I can reach it from my other hand so it needs to go this way uh, essentially uh, this part will be here this will be here and I'll loop this around and have adjustability to pull it tighter or looser but I will need a separate short belt to go from here and so on to here. So I'll do that first. And then uh, progressing back around here, the part that's on my back is going to have another one coming off like that. Well, I got that slightly backwards. Um, the proper arrangement on this is the, uh, <clears throat> I guess you'd call it the female side of the parachute buckle, is coming in from the top. So this is the part where I attach the strap to come off this way. Matter of fact, I'm going to mark it that way. So I know the strap goes in that direction. And then the, uh, the male side is the part that comes up through the handle of the table, up under my armpit, and then uh, rejoins like this. And its adjustable strap hangs downward. The way I had it first, it would have gone upwards. That would have been very awkward. So, uh, carrying on. So as with the other strap, <clears throat> a few
fuse the ends and uh, I need to pass the short length of belt around this so I've got the buckle here with the short length of fold over and that is going to be adjusted to lay on top of, it's hard to get the light here so it's visible basically I want to have it go the full length so it looks decent or the full width of the uh, two inch belt and still hang out a little bit it's one of the curses of black fabric it doesn't reflect enough light so uh, so here's the the wider belt and then the shorter part I'm going to make so it just extends this buckle just beyond the edge of the wide belt and uh, that means I have to cut it off just about here So now I've got one belt here with the short piece wrapped around. I'm going to make another one just like it for the back. So cut an identical length. And go ahead and use those. I think I was getting my flame a little close to the fibers before and melting them excessively. Just needs to warm them up enough that the nylon melts a bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and sew these short lengths on where I marked the wide belt. Do the one in the front first. I've got my chalk mark. I know that I have to go in this direction with it. So I lace up one of the smaller buckles. I'm going to place it right There. Actually, I think it would be more cosmetic if instead of sewing it to the front, I sewed it to the rear. I think that'll look a lot better, so I'll do it that way. This could be kind of a challenge for this needle on the sewing machine. I'll see how it goes. one of the problems I have with my sewing machine. It's got a LED light in it, but it's way too dim. I should investigate getting uh, one that's some sort of an add-on light. I think there are people who make kits like that that can add a lot more light under a sewing machine. Okay, so I dropped the foot. I'm still on my... Oh, the sewing machine reverted to a 2.2 inch or 2.2 setting on the stitch so I'm going back to the three I had before and still on a lock stitch I've dropped the foot lower the needle if I can find the foot pedal waiting for it to do the lock stitch and it wants to balk a little bit because the fabric is so thick
and I'm going to do the cross stitch. As usual, the belt's getting in the way. Try to eyeball what's a good angle to do this at. Not get my hands too much in the picture. More experienced sewers would probably know I'm doing this in some stupid awkward way and I could do better, but I don't know what that is, so I'm just forging ahead. I'm not an experienced sewer, I just know a few basics. To me, even being able to sew a little bit, use the sewing machine even a little bit, is like being able to use a welder a little bit or a table saw a little bit. It's better than not using it at all. Okay, tell it I want to close lock stitch. snipping of the excess thread. Okay, so now does that show up? I have to see if I can move the blade a little bit. This is where I wanted the buckle to be and coming in this direction, and it is, but most of the stitching is hidden behind the belt. So I think that'll be pretty good. Now I have to do likewise for the the uh, flip side which is yeah it's right here and it has to go in that direction. Bring my sewing machine to the fore again find my other buckle and put it on the back as I did before Excess thread, and I've got this one sewn on here. And there are the the two of them. So the remaining step is to put the buckles on this one inch strap that I've already sized to go around my chest, go to the buckles and have enough extra to accommodate larger clothing in the winter. Um, so I'm just going to uh, start out by fusing the ends of the fabric. Seems like I have ignition problems with all these things. The, the gas comes out and they don't want to start. It's very frustrating. There we go. OK. 
Okay, so once again, there's a side on these that has a set of ribs on the middle piece, and I want to feed the strap up on the buckle side, feed it over the ribbed center piece, and back down. And before sewing anything, I want to make sure that uh, I've tested these that it's going to work properly. If you've got it upside down or threaded incorrectly, it won't lock when you pull on it or it won't release when you tip it. Like this. So um, I'm going to go around the other side making sure I keep the side that's supposed to be close to my body properly positioned. So that would mean that um, this is the outside here. I'm going to come in this way and feed back through there and not see if I got that screwed up or not. Take both buckles and have them uh, so their adjustment side is to the outside of the loop and then follow the loop around and see if I have a twist in it and I do not. It's correct, so I got it right the first time. And really the only thing remaining now that these are uh, laced up is to fold the ends over and sew them like I did on the larger strap, so I'm going to do that now. not going to cross stitch these because they're so small. The amount of overlap is so small it doesn't really merit it. I'm just going to put a lock stitch right on the end and call it a day. go. Snip off a couple of excess threads and all the sewing should be done now. The question is will it all fit properly when all is said and done. So uh, I've got the large loop here and then I've got the smaller loop that can go around my chest off to the side and uh, I'm not really sure how easy this will be to use, but we'll see. I don't even plan to uh, unbuckle it except to put it through the loop on the table, so... There's through the loop on the table. And now holding on to the... Um, what kind of contortion is required for this? See if it works. One thing I should have done is let the length out on this a little bit, make it a little easier. Get it over my shoulder and lift it up. Buckle this guy on and now uh, cinch it to the desired carrying height. And now with this strap here, get it under my armpit and pull this across my chest a little bit. Now the shoulder strap cannot slip off and I can just walk around hands free and not worry about the table going anywhere. And this is actually pretty comfortable. I don't need a pad up here. It's uh, plenty wide and uh, I think this will work pretty well. We'll give it a try. I have a show tomorrow to do and uh, either everybody will laugh or everybody will point and say I want one of those straps. So. We'll see. Thanks for watching.